Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. Glad to hear this Friday morning. Got a great show lined up. A special guest here. Very interesting. Going to really enjoy him. But first, let's take a look at our weather. Brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning, Drew Pollard. His hardworking crew taking care of everyday comfort needs, and today's going to be nice. And tomorrow, high of 71, low of 61. Not bad. Water temperature at the end of the pier eased up a little bit, about a half degree, like 59.4 now. But, man, it's about to hit 60 next week, so it's got a little bit of rise to it. Take a look at the river region brought to us by Panama City Coca-Cola. Good folks down there. We're looking at... The Apalachicola of Blunstown right now is 10.9, so we'll say 11 right now, about level off. And the shock test at Caribbean, 11.7, still high, but it's going to drop down. And now the, the rain we talked about yesterday coming up on Saturday and Sunday, it looks like it's going to be later on Sunday. So the weekend looks pretty good for the outdoor activities. Let's do a, our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. We're looking at a low tide this morning, 7.24. Low tide at about 9.15 tonight, good strong tides. We're going to be coming south, southeast at about 11. And let's do our fishing game times right now, brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers in Port St. Joe. Uh, one time today, 10.51 to 12.51. Let's take a break. We'll come right back with our guest. Okay, welcome back, folks, and welcome to our guest this Friday morning, Jeff Talbert. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Thank you for having me. We're glad to have you. We got uh, connected with our friend Ariel Payne, with their friends, and she, you know, she loves the outdoors, and she's been on before, and she knew Jeff as an outdoors guy, and we got connected, so we're glad to have him uh, here on the show. So I want to tell the folks uh, what you do, and then we're going to talk about your background a little bit, yeah? Sure. Well, I work for the Atlanta Botanical Garden. Uh, within the garden, we have the Southeastern Center for Conservation, and that is an organization, a department of the, of the garden, where we protect rare plants throughout the Southeast United States, some in Central America, South America, um, anywhere where there's rare plants, we're going to try to try to save them. And so okay. um, I run a project here uh, along the Gulf Coast, um, doing just that, saving rare plants along here. We got we got a lot of rare plants here. So, so you, and you've been with the state parks. I mean, you what, what parks you worked at? Sure, I I started with the with the Florida State Parks in 2008 as a ranger at Grayton Beach State Park. Yep. Uh, which was a fantastic experience. It was a wonderful park. Um, and Grayton oversees both Grayton and Deer Lake, so I got to experience both of those two parks at the same time. Uh, met a lot of great people along the way, and uh, then I moved over to Topsail as a park services specialist where I did resource management, so I did a lot more burning, shorebird work, sea turtle work, um, you know, habitat restoration, all the all the good things oh, man. you think about when you say park ranger. Being a park ranger is mostly fixing electricity on people's campsites and checking <laughs> people in, but... Uh, yeah. You do get a lot of, do a lot of neat stuff out there too. Yeah, we talk about this kind of things we do with our umbrella of outdoors about, you know, and we always talk about our state park system, how fortunate we are. And so we have one of the, somebody that's had a chance to work there and be a part of it. So we're so glad to have him on now. But tell us your interesting background. I, I, so tell us a little bit about you down, you grew up down in Titusville basically. And so Ooh. Played ball there. And I sure did. Uh, what position you play? I played quarterback and wide receiver. Okay. I also punted. <laughs> you, you love you love football, didn't you? I did. I did love football. Uh, I actually, uh, prior to getting into conservation work, I tried to make it my career. So yeah, uh, I got into. I went to Florida State University. Sorry, Gator fans. Uh, <laughs> we went to uh, when I went there. I was trying to be. I wanted to be a football coach. That was really kind of the track that I wanted to be on. And so. Um, I went down to the football offices and, and uh, I basically marched into Jeff Bowden's office and asked him if I could just hang around and learn football from some of the greatest football minds that were out there. And uh, uh, he told me to come back. I came back first day of spring practice in 2001, I'm sorry, 2000. And uh, I, for the next five years, I was uh, working as a volunteer assistant. A volunteer, like a graduate assistant at, with the FSU football program. Yep. Under Coach Bowden, yeah. Under Coach Bobby Bowden. That's right. That was an honor, wasn't it? It was a true honor. Oh, wow. It was a true honor. He was an amazing man to be around, and we had some really great coaches that came through there. The current head coach of uh, University of Georgia, he was a graduate assistant while I was there. Yeah. Our own famous Danny Nagy, he was there. 
Was Mark Rick was there at that time? Mark Rick was there he, the first year I was there. You were around some outstanding <laughs> coaches. <laughs> it Good. did. Uh, just a, a, a quick funny story. The first day I walked in the football office, these, I had known all these guys growing up. This was my favorite football team. And I walked in there, and they're all sitting at the table. Mark Rick and Jeff Bowden, Jimmy Higgins, and Billy Sexton, they're all sitting at the table there. And uh, Jeff Bowden looks over, and he says, Hey, Jeff Rowe. I look back, and I go, Hey, Jeff Rowe, because that's just who I am. And Mark Rick looked at me and go, kids these days they just don't have any respect <laughs> and the entire room fell out laughing it was so it was so embarrassing but it was hilarious and that's funny. it was uh from that moment on it was just a, yeah. a great great experience to be yeah. there part of that and y'all y'all had a good run there we did have a pretty good run uh that my first year there was under was chris winky was the quarterback and we mm -hmm. uh, uh went to the national championship against oklahoma and we didn't fare too well that one yeah yeah but wow. it was it was neat it was a really neat experience great experience so sure and you, you you tried coaching. You did coach a little bit, and got sort of what happened on that. Just did. Um, so I went down to Weber International University as a graduate assistant, mm -hmm. uh, and I got my so through coaching. I got uh, I was able to get a you know an undergrad degree, and I also was able to get a master's degree out of it. Uh, but I went down as a graduate assistant at Weber International um, down in Lake Wales, Florida, um, and then I just sort of uh, kind of wanted to change things a little bit. I was. I realized I was watching swallowtail kites and bald eagles more than I was watching my players, and I needed to, <laughs> I needed to just do something outside where I could be among that all the time. And, and it's also we all, as a former coach, we always talk about basing our career on the actions of 17, 18 year old kids. <laughs> it was that was yeah, it was not a wasn't going to be a smart move. Uh, you, you have a lot of friends in the business and everything, and you see them moving around a lot. They yeah. you know changing jobs, you know a, a lot, especially just at the early part of your career. And I just it didn't yeah. it didn't that part didn't appeal to me, and so. So you like looking at the bird, the eagles, and the, the swallowtails, and also then what? What did you get into? The um, so I uh, I actually tried for two years to get on as a park ranger at the, the Florida Park Service. So I interviewed all over the state. I interviewed down in the Keys, uh, Central Florida. Uh, I came up here and interviewed at St. George Island. Um, and uh, I every every interview I went to, they said, you know, you should volunteer and see what the job's about. So volunteer and see what the job's yeah. about. And so. I finally had some time where I could volunteer and see what the job's about, and the folks over at Great and they liked what they saw, and they hired well, me on. So I'm very grateful for the opportunity that they gave me to to you know pursue this passion of mine. So yes, and uh, and you enjoy photography, and you obviously taking some great pictures. And what what are some of your things you enjoy in outdoors? Uh, just being in it. Being in every it. every afternoon, uh, I take me and my dog Clementine. We go and we go over to uh, Ponce de Leon State Park, which is about five minutes up the road from my house. Um, okay. And there's some hiking trails over there, and we just we take our afternoon walk through the woods. Um, sometimes, you know, I live on 20 acres. We I got a little nature trail through the through the forest there, and I got a lot of plants that I check on. And so we we take that. You know, sometimes we'll do it in the mornings and. Sometimes in the evening, it's just yeah. being out there amongst it, seeing what you see, being quiet, and, and you can pretty well identify the birds, and animals, and the plants. You pretty well, you pretty good. I'm pretty good on pretty good line, yeah. yeah, yeah. I didn't start out that way. Uh, okay, all right. We're gonna take a break. Come right back with Jeff. Okay, welcome back with Jeff Talbert here with Land of Botanical Staff, working over at uh, Deer Lake. Is That's that correct. Now? And. Uh, he sent some pictures, and I was fascinated looking at these pictures. A couple of them, I couldn't figure out what they were, but, but, but tell us, sort of, okay, so you, how did you get into this sort of now? About? Uh, so I was working with the state parks, and okay. the, the state parks um, partner had been a partner with Atlanta Botanical Garden for a number of years, um, getting plants, uh, pitcher plants and stuff like that, collecting seed, growing them in, a gar in the greenhouses in Atlanta, and then putting them back into the, the habitats around here. Yeah. Uh, and so um, on a larger scale over at Deer Lake, there's a lot of these areas over here, but Deer Lake, Grayton, Point Washington, there's a lot of the wetlands have been, they're degraded because they had a lack of fire for so long. Yeah. Um, uh, the Sancho Paper Company owned a lot of that land, very interested in civil culture, recreation, mm -hmm. outdoor stuff, but uh, e habitat management, wasn't really high on their list, yeah. um, which we're very grateful because they kept those lands open regardless of, of what they used them for. And so now we get a chance to, to restore them um, and bring them back. And so lack of fire, uh, the wetlands weren't in great shape. And so the state parks realized that they couldn't just return fire into these wetlands and return them back to how they were. Uh, they needed to do something else. And so um, they devised this project wherein uh, we got $9 million from the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation. Um, and we are on track to restore 300 acres of wetlands over there at Deer Lake. Awesome. So. Well, I love a story like that. Let's get into some of these pictures now, okay? Because uh, 
Here we go. You tell you're going to tell folks, I, when I saw this, I just didn't know what to think. So tell me, what is this? Uh, this is the surface of, a, of an Amanita mushroom. It's a mushroom that occurs around here. You see it a lot in, in pylons. It grows up in the wintertime, uh, very colorful and red. That's the, the top of it there, the, the same okay. one. Okay. Um, so that's a mushroom. Yeah, it's sort of uh, it's sort of one of the iconic mushrooms that we have uh, around in this area. You see them a lot um, in our in our natural areas. Yeah. Now I love you got your signature down the bottom right hand corner, Jeff Jeff Talbert. Yeah, I do. Uh, so I I take I taught myself photography. I I realized being in the state parks, being you know out in these wild areas, these natural areas that uh, uh, cell phone camera wasn't going to do what it is that I wanted to do yeah. and what I wanted to see and how I saw things. And so uh, in 2012, I bought a, a, a regular DSLR camera with interchangeable lenses and all that stuff. Okay. And I taught myself how to, how to take photographs. Uh, and I, I, I told myself, I'm only going to use this thing on manual. I'm not going to use any automatic settings. I'm going to figure this out. And so um, it's just sort of, I've sort of just developed from there. Uh, well, do you use automatic or you use manual? No, I, I, everything's manual. I take okay. the camera to take pictures. <laughs> you just kept getting higher. Yeah, I just kept getting better and better, better equipment. Now, I've seen this. This is beautiful. Tell us about it. Uh, so this is a rare magnolia that we have around here. Um, many people may not know that we have uh, several species of magnolia trees that occur here. You see the regular, uh, you know, regular one that you associate with being in the south. That's the one I see, yeah. This one is called the Ashes Magnolia. It's very rare and it's, it's, it's endemic to the Panhandle, which means it only occurs in like four or five counties here in the Panhandle Whoa, of Florida. Really? Uh, and you'll see it out like in, in the sort of ravine areas up near Ponce by where I live out in Torreya, uh, you know, a little farther to the oh, cool. Jackson County and all that stuff. It's a very rare magnolia. Cool. All this, right. This is the Carolina Lily. Uh, if you're out hunting in the uh, in the spring, late spring, you'll see these uh, pop up, or late summer, you'll see these pop up out there in the woods uh, as you're walking around. They are uh, a, another listed species in the state of Florida. They're listed as threatened here in the state of Florida. So wow. uh, most of our lily species. Is that are, around wetland area too? Or just uh, no, it's a kind of a transition to a upland hardwood area. That's cool. That is cool. All right, this your buddy here. This this is my buddy. This is Clementine. She helps me. Uh, she helps me find some of the rare plants when we're when we're walking around some of these natural areas. Well, she's standing right by what pitcher plants. Those are our white top pitcher plants. Yep. She uh, she's also really good at finding box turtles. <laughs> <laughs> she can sniff those out and let me know that they're there. Uh, uh, she, but she, yeah, we spend a lot of time together uh, walking around the woods. Ah, uh, she's pretty. Okay. Uh, this is a Gulf Coast lupine. So this is, uh, a lot of people may recognize this from around here. This is also an endemic, which means it only occurs along the Gulf Coast here. You won't see it anywhere else in the state of Florida. Uh, and you'll see it out there by the beach areas in the, okay. in the dunes and everything. It's a lupine species here. I've seen, I've seen those and I never knew uh, they were that rare. Sure. Oh, this is great. Uh, this is our smallest butterfly, the little metal mark. Uh, and you'll see these floating around. Um, in our natural areas in the wetlands and everything, you'll, uh, they're very hard to see because they are less than an inch big. Um, yeah. But it's on a, on a milkwort there, which they call candy root. Because uh, wow. if you ever smell the roots, they smell like um, wintergreen. Wow. Now, are those migratory butterflies or are they just sort of uh, No, like, they, I, I think they're, they're here they're most of the year, but they're, only, they're uh, out like late summer, midsummer to late summer. Oh, cool. Them. That's a great picture. Oh, look at this one. So this is a panhandle lily. This is another one of our rarities that we uh, we have it's from about Walton County over into Blackwaters, where you see a lot of these uh, out there. But this is a, a, another endemic. It only occurs here in the panhandle, uh, and uh, you can only see them in a very select few places um, around in this area. Wow. And that one's got some insect action on there too. They're very, they're very <laughs> yeah, popular. They're, they're grasshopper. That's cool. They're blending right in. Okay. Uh, this is a pitcher plant flower. Uh, and pitcher plant flowers are very unique in their structure. Um, they are designed to prevent self-pollination. And so... To prevent it? To prevent self-pollination. Okay. Uh, they want to ensure that they get pollination from another plant on there. Uh, and so the, the insect will enter in uh, over the, uh, not over the, under the petals, but next to it. And there's a little uh, repository where the, they deposit the pollen. They go in, they dig around, and they exit out from underneath the petal. And so they go in one way, come out another, and it oh. ensures that that flower gets pollen from a, another plant. Is, that, is nature amazing? I mean, you see it firsthand. I, I say it all the time. Plants are weird. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like a enter and exit, exit only. That's right. Know, whatever. That's right. It's it's uh, it's really it's really fascinating to see how some of these things have 
have over time changed themselves so that they, you know, that they can ensure that they continue on. Yeah, that is so cool. Now, when, when you take it, we've got more pictures, but I, want, I, I kept seeing the clarity of your pictures and all. Do you, uh, technique wise, uh, what, what's the most important thing when you're taking these pictures? You, steady oh, hands. Steady, okay. <laughs> I, I have the same thing when I'm out there fi filming a fishing trip, but yeah. with steady hands and I'm terrible at it. So. It's, uh, it, it never fails, because I, I shoot a lot of macro, so I, I shoot a lot of close up, and I'm shooting a lot of things that are on very thin stems on like what seems to be the windiest day ever. So <laughs> uh, sometimes you just gotta hold it. I mean, sometimes you gotta bring a tripod with you, but um, it's, just, it's really just patience yeah. is really what it boils down to. A lot of patience. Patience and, and being still. Mm -hmm. that's, that's being cool. still and just looking around you, uh, looking yeah. for for different angles. And you have a, a monopod or tripod or anything? Or you I, just... I do have a tripod in the car, but I'm usually since I'm usually at work when I'm doing this stuff, it's it's I just carry it with me and shoot it offhand. A lot of times when you see something like this, are you looking for it? Or are you just walking along and all of a sudden you see it? A lot of times you just see it. Yeah. There's a lot of times where I take a, I take I'll be taking a picture of a flower and I get it home and start you know do my editing process and I realize that there was like a spider that I, I didn't even realize was there. Oh yeah. Or some other small insect yeah. that I didn't I didn't even recognize or see at the time. That's cool. That's cool. We're gonna take a final break. Come right back with Jeff. Okay, well, welcome back. Having a great show here. Great time with Jeff Talbert. So. Uh, before, uh, well, let's take a look at our fishing game times. Well, we've already done that. This is our segment on Friday. We usually do the fishing, famous Friday fishing forecast. We're brought to us by Jessica Ling Insurance and Financial Group and Hammer Down Roofing with Matt Andrews. We're going to, uh, I want to tell you real quick about fishing, what's going on. Uh, the redfish have been hot. Bill Allen caught some really, really nice redfish. Uh, and also, I was out in the flats, and the captains this past week have had a great week on catching bull, redfish in the past. So that's the hottest thing. Bass fishing good, pond fishing is excellent. So, uh, well, but I want to while we have Jeff here, I want to continue. Uh, and I know you're waiting for the for the drawing, so I'm gonna let uh, Jeff draw draw one name now, Jeff. Okay, this is a twenty dollar gift certificate to Tarpon Rock Seafood. And the winner is from Panama City, D.W. Jacobs. Uh, one more for the Big Red Snapper. And that winner is Ethan Walden. That's our two winners. Okay, now we're going to, uh, let's get back to our pictures. We've got a lot more to cover. And uh, this one right here. Tell us about it, Jeff. Uh, this is another one of our lilies. This occurs out here at our local state parks along the coast. You see this a lot. Uh, all over the Panhandle, but along the coast. This is one of the, uh, one of these, these are, these bloom in the late summertime. Okay. Uh, and they kind of uh, add a real splash of color to the late summer when not a lot of stuff is happening because it's really, really hot. Adds a splash to it. Oh, yeah. That's a beautiful view. But this is Deer Lake? Or? Uh, this is actually Campbell Lake at Topsail. Okay. Uh, but this is one of our rare coastal dune lakes that we have uh, along the coast here over in Walton County. We get 17 named dune lakes. Um, I'm also the I'm on the chairman of the Coastal Dune Lakes Advisory Board for Walton County. So awesome. we work to uh, to protect these lakes and help keep them healthy. Um, and our project is very much focused on the wetlands that supply these lakes with water. So those wetlands that we're restoring at Deer Lake, we're cutting that hardwood out of there, uh, returning fire into wet prairies and seepage slopes for um, all the plants wow. that are in there. You go, yeah, for the water quality. You're gonna come back on. We're gonna have to talk about wetland preservation and how to sure. do it, and, and, and uh, that's good stuff. Okay. This is a, a sundew. This is a carnivorous plant. It catches uh, insects on those little dew drops on the leaf there, and then. Um, digest the, the insects right there on the plant. These, uh, the, you'll see these all over the place. This is, particular species is listed as threatened in the state of Florida. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow, beautiful. Uh, so this is one of uh, a uh, species that a lot of people will recognize being out in the woods. This is a, a trumpet pitcher plant. They'll be yellow, red, kind of red next. They have all sort of different color variations. Uh, but this is one of the uh, this is one of the areas that we have restored over at Deer Lake, where we yeah. cut the hardwoods out Man. and turned fire in there. What a natural beauty right here in the Florida Panhandle! Wow, look at this. Uh, this is one of our restoration areas over there at Deer Lake. You can see the effect that we have. We've taken these this, these hardwood trees that uh, grew up when there wasn't any uh, when fire wasn't allowed to roll through there. Um, so we've removed all that tai tai is the oh, tree that's okay. in there. We've, oh, removed, we've, we've removed all that. <laughs> 
uh, and put fire back in at about a two-year interval, and this is the result. We don't really have to do any planting or anything. Okay. They just, it just comes back. Natural. So we, every two years, y'all, y'all put it in? Uh, two years, yep. That's uh, what that's we're cool. for. That's All right. So this, this is the white-fringed orchid. This is a ground orchid that we have here. It's listed in the state of Florida as endangered, and it... Uh, it is the reason that I basically have a job because uh, uh, John Benty and uh, the Florida Park staff back when Deer Lake was acquired back in 1996, uh, they found one of those in the woods and they, that's what kicked off this idea that we need to restore these wetlands because we have this rare plant that they hadn't seen. They know that it's supposed to occur there, but hadn't seen really seen anywhere. And so wow. that really kind of kicked off this idea in their head that- What uh, a vision they had. They, I mean, yeah. I mean, really? I mean, I, I, mean I, had a, I had a great opportunity to work for John Bente too, so it was, wow. it was a, a wonderful experience that um, I'd learned, I learned a lot. And we'll talk about that, the importance of this. We talk about it on the show all the time about you know, taking care of our outdoors and conserving it. And that, that's a, this is a classic case right there. In 1996, they had a vision, and the state bought this, and you see what has happened. All right. <laughs> this is a popular one. This is a white top pitcher plant. Yep, you see these around a lot too. This I is also listed as uh, threatened in the state of Florida. Uh, these plants love fire. Uh, interesting thing about the white tops is that um, all the other pitcher plants we have put up really nice uh, leaves in the spring. They flower in the spring, put up leaves in the spring. The white tops, they look okay. <laughs> when it comes back to the fall, yeah. every, everything puts out new leaves in the fall to take, a, take advantage of a new round of pollinators that come in the, in the fall with the fall bloom. Uh -huh. The white tops put up these grand, great, big, beautiful pictures. Everything else, meh. Wow. And so it really takes advantage of the uh, of the fall uh, pollinators. How do you know all this stuff? I learned it on the fly. There you <laughs> I go. call myself the, the accidental botanist. Is, <laughs> the accidental botanist. Yeah. I love that. Okay, one or two more. Uh, so this is the, uh, another orchid that we have here, um, the yellow fringed orchid. It, you'll see it in the, a lot of the same wetland places. You see some of the, the, the white one as well. This is also listed as endangered in the state of Florida. And throughout the southeast, it occurs throughout Georgia and some in Alabama, wow. too. It's very rare. Okay. All right. That, that's, that's a great, you sent us a great set of pictures. I, you keep using the word endangered. How, uh, we only got a couple minutes left. We're, I knew we were going to run out of time. <laughs> Why is everything so endangered? What, what's, what's happened? Uh, habitat loss is mostly the reason that a lot of stuff is endangered. Um, is, that's, a, that's a big thing. Uh, you know, um, building houses, subdivisions, all that yeah. stuff on a lot of these areas, especially a lot of these wet areas, uh, yeah. not, not preserving the wetlands. Yeah. Um, but we are very lucky in the state of Florida. We have preserved a, a lot of land for conservation. We have. Uh, through like the, you know, the, the water management districts, the state parks, state forests. We have, we have Negosi Plantation over in Walton County, yeah. Eglin, Tyndall. You know, a lot of these places yeah. preserve a lot of the stuff. And in the southeast, it's, not, it's, it's a little bit rare. Like in Georgia, yeah. some of these plants that occur in Georgia, the last known uh, instance of this plant will be on like a, a power line easement or a oh, roadside. Wow. You know? Wow. So we're very, very fortunate in the state of Florida and we're open to try to take care of that. That's great. Well, listen, thank you for coming on. It's been a great show and thank you for what you're doing. I mean, that's really cool. And uh, you sell your pictures or anything? People get your pictures or you just take I mean, them? you can see them on, on Instagram at okay. Jeff Talbert Photography or uh, at Atlanta BG Conservation is our, yeah. is our conservation page. So. Well, you're doing some good things. Thank you. And, uh, we appreciate it. Thank you for coming Thank on. you for having me on. I really appreciate it. We'll have to get you to come back later. I'd love to. All right, awesome. Love to. Folks, always, we appreciate uh, you watching Panhandle Outdoors. And uh, it, it, God's nature not beautiful. And we've got people taking care of it now. And that's, that's a great thing. So, listen, y'all have a great weekend. Do something good for someone else today. Enjoy the outdoors, take care of it, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.